going to be acting as our scribe, Grant. And he's going to be doing Titus so that we know lots of good ideas. He's going to make sure everything gets recorded. And you'll see how that happens as we move along. No, I bet I did I bet I didn't bring my adapter with me. Who else has a Mac? It's an old is that, is that one with the mouth and 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 um, yeah, um, yeah. Tim, we we're going to want him to type. Uh, He's got to go on the fly. Uh, yeah, eventually we're going to want to uh, okay. okay, so when we get to the question, we'll call it up here. When we get down to the we're going to I still see the computers open, although I'm seeing the lights going off. It will reassure me if they actually get slow. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when you're doing, you know, when, you're, when the speakers are speaking, it's so easy to say, oh, I'm going to go check that out. And you go check that out, and then you miss, and then they, you know, it, it, but it's easy to do. You know, my hero forever. <laughs> I've been wandering around him the whole day. Yeah. <laughs>
While we're waiting to, uh, to get started here, uh, just I don't know how many of you have seen the National Science, the new National Science Framework that has just come out. Have any of you had an opportunity to take a look at it? Okay, that that is something that I would. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. You've gone through. You've gone through the new ones. Yes. Okay. Um, something that you'll find really kind of interesting is that I think that uh, we are situated incredibly well uh, in the new science framework. So if the uh, national standards uh, hold and, and maintain fidelity to the framework, which they're supposed to do. I think that you'll find that astronomy has many, many places within the new, within the new science standards. One of those, I just, you know, reading through it, this, these are the engineering standards. And 10 years ago, you would have never seen this, I don't think. And that is, this is an engineering standard. And so by grade, in end grade five, tools and instruments, and look at the examples they give. Rulers, balances, thermometers, graduated cylinders, and Hey. and microscopes, okay, are used in scientific exploration to gather data and help answer questions about the natural world. And so that is a... Doesn't say computers. No, no, doesn't say computers. But, uh, and, and there's lots of opportunity in there for astronomy to find its way in there, and in particular robotic telescopes under the engineering uh, section of the, of the framework. So. Really, is what I was just I was really pleased to actually see that in there. But that doesn't have a whole lot to do with the presentation that um, Kate and I are going to do here. But if you give everyone a chance to sit down, down, everyone. Okay. Perhaps you should minimize your the, the, the thing of hand. You want me to minimize that? Uh, well, I don't want to, just that it could mess up with your slides. No, 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 not that. That. That's it. Yeah. Whoops. Just go to presentation again. Okay. Maybe you can click your... Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. All right, good. Okay. Um, yeah, they've all kind of migrated to their normal spot, so yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to ask you, we're going to be mixing you up as well. We've all found a nice, comfortable spot, and we're going to ask you, I'm going to count off by six, and then I'll give you an assigned spot to be. And actually, before I get started, I would just like to take a minute to acknowledge all of the people in the room who have contributed so much to this conference by the willingness to communicate in English and doing such an amazing job at it. So just take a moment. One, two, three, you want to stay there. So we'll give you four. four group four is going to have to meet over here. Five, six, one, two, three, four. Left off at five. So who else? Well, Glenn before. Four. He's going to be here. Okay. Who was the four? The so last four was Actually, over. Actually, it might be John Kalina. I'm not sure which. Okay. So one person left. Um, so there we're going to move you to five. Okay. So we're going to put the fours here. Okay. So fours, you can just bring your chairs right up around here and be around Alan. One. Glenn left the room. Two. <laughs> Three. You're talking me? No way. Five. Two. And six. You do not. You don't need to bring anything with you other than maybe something to write with. Write on if you want. There's no need to, to move your all of your stuff or move your computers or anything like that. Do you need something to write on? You, if you may want that. Uh, that might be something or at least if one for the word. Okay. 
Alan, are you poor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Four? Four. Okay, so who who is a who's a four? Who's I'm a, I'm a four. Fours are right there. Fours are right here. Okay, so this is a major four. Who is a five? Who all are five? Okay, fives are right there. What number are you? Sixes. Sixes. Who else is six? This is all right. This is you guys. You know what? I haven't been in the classroom for a whole year. You're giving me, you know, taking me right back and putting me in the classroom. That's uh, great. I can take the next level if you want. <laughs> you're doing here, or, or um, why are we doing this that's making you do this, all of this? Well, I've first, of all, <laughs> first of all, we recognize that there is a tremendous amount of gray matter here, okay? Mm -hmm. Not dark matter, but gray matter. Okay. In case I'm old. <laughs> I know, so, I am old. And there's a wealth of experience, there's a wealth of knowledge in this room. And there's not only a wealth of uh, knowledge about hands-on universe and about the education here in the United States, but there's also a wealth of knowledge about education around the world. And that is something that, as Kate and I go through this, you're going to find is going to be one of the key components of what we're going to propose. Okay. Um, that said, you know, the statement up here kind of uh, captures uh, discussions that have gone on for uh, a couple months, a little over a month. And what we want to develop, and, and you know, in, when Kate and I were listening to the presentations over the past couple days, we are sitting there, oh, these guys have set us up perfectly. You know, when Rosa is there talking about uh, creating this community and we need to break down the barriers and we need to understand that we are together in this, not in competition in this. You know, that set up the whole thing for what Kate and I are going to propose, which is what we hope is the method, the way, the vehicle to get there. And this is only a beginning here today. And that's something that's very important to understand. And as we get a little uh, more in depth in this, hopefully you'll understand what we really mean you know, by this, by this statement. But if you think about the presentations that have gone on here in the past couple of days, uh, this is a way that we hope uh, can bring all of these resources together into a common, what we're going to call a cloud or a nebula, that individuals can engage in in a very flexible way, but in also in a way where the cloud responds to their needs in a very automated, uh, a very easy sort of way. So we'll get there and give a little more meat and potatoes to that in a second. Kate, go ahead. Okay. And so I've been involved in a number of different visioning or strategic planning processes over the years. And uh, I think my husband's campaign is the least strategically planned thing that there ever was. But, uh, but I've been involved in a lot of planning issues, and I've never done one, anything of deep meaning with a large group in under a half a day, a day. Three days is a really good amount of time. So what we're going to try and do here is condense an awful lot of stuff into an hour and a half. 
And in order to do that, I just want to be clear, we're not going to get the chance to come to agreement on this. This is autocratic here for a second. Is that we've already asked you if you want to participate to not have your cell phones or your laptops um, running. We are going to have some pretty strict time limits, and we're going to work our, do our best to hold to those. So if we ask you to stop talking, I want you to just not be offended by that. Write down whatever it is you got cut off from and bring it to us later or add it at another time. I know that I am, we have somebody recording information here. We will not, we'll do our best not to lose anything. But in order to get the biggest picture of what we to get to our goals, we're gonna we're gonna hold to some some time limit. And if we made some mistakes on that, we'll figure it out as we go. But we're gonna hold to the plan. And we've all had lots and lots of experiences. And you may have some point have you know post traumatic stress over something that happened in HOU in the past or your own experiences. You might have some we've got all got a lot of negative experiences as well as the positive. What we'd like to do today is remember that if you want to if those come up for you, we'd like you to share them in terms of um, we learned blank from blank. Uh, Put anything that you have, and all your experiences in, in a positive term. What did you learn? And likewise, if there's something that's really making you uncomfortable about how we're doing things, or there's something that needs to be addressed, please just write it down. We've got dinner, we've got tomorrow morning, I'd be happy to talk at that time, but we're really going to hold to the group moving um, forward on that process. And break. We do have a break scheduled within this. Um, what we would like to do is just keep moving. We've got very little time. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom, get your drink, um, that's not going to interrupt the flow at all. Okay? So if you need to do that, um, and especially when we start to the discussion pieces, there'll be great pieces of time to do that. Okay? Okay. So very quickly here, we are going to stick to this. You have 30 seconds to capture whatever it is that you are and tell the rest of us as far as your past experience with HOU uh, or your experience in astronomy education. 30 seconds, you think about it, and we are going to cut you off at the 30 second mark. You're not going to be able to talk beyond that. So very quickly, all right, my name is Tim Spuck. I've been involved with Hands On Universe since 1992. Uh, first went down to Make workshop in Macon, Georgia. That's where Viv and I kind of got together, had a great time, uh, and have been involved with the Hanson Universe Asteroid Search, helping to develop that, uh, getting my kids involved uh, in ast astronomical research, and HOU was the vehicle for doing that. So I've been very engaged with Hanson Universe off and on in the last... Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, since I got involved and taught this in school. My passion is bringing it to more teachers and making sure they have telescope images. No. Well, people call me the co-director, Carl, of Hands-On Universe. Uh, I started back in 1999 with the first, with a conference. Uh, and most recently, um, I bust Rosa's dishes. <laughs> You bust your dishes? Usually. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Go right ahead. I, I joined uh, Hanson Universe since year 2000. Uh, since that, I, um, I like this uh, program because the Chinese students need uh, this kind of program, and I introduced this program into China, and uh, I spent a lot of time to uh, teach in school, and I also happy to benefit uh, a lot of uh, Chinese students. Great. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. And pay attention who's in your group, too, as far as what their background is. Uh, my name's Denise, and I'm a Texas teacher who is part of the collaborative called Texas Regional uh, Collaborative, in which they selected 18 teachers to go to Berkeley, California for three weeks class course in astronomy. We learned astronomy basics, we learned HOU, and we learned uh, Isaac. Okay, great. Hi. I'm Ty Walker. I'm uh, known as some circles of dark space um, crusaders, I guess. And um, I'm sponsored by Jupiter. I was at night, directed, and then I went out to 10 
here, with the plants that you hear, all of my initial training was as a astronomer, and I've known uh, both of them for a few years now, and I guess through that, I'm so involved with the HIV, but not really, I'm more involved with the biology training program, and I'm making my baby here at uh, I'm Gustavo, I come from Brazil. I'm an astronomer and I work with science education, science outreach, and teacher training. I've been in global dancing for two years. And I also like GTCP and I have a great time here. Great. My name is Susan Rupert, I'm from Kenya, and uh, I've, I've been I'm the ambassador of Africa too. The astronomy world of South Africa, who has been also the ambassador of global science and universe back to Africa. Nice, and she likes Hotel California, so she does good taste in music. So, let's go. Okay, I'm Hotel from China, and I got familiar with uh, the time we worked with Susan and Sally when I was born in China.
the stuff that you guys do, and I want to steal it all. <laughs> I can't really it. And I'm Chuck. I've been a part of HLU since the uh, last week of July of this year. <laughs> uh, saw information about it on the uh, Astronomers Club Orders website. I'll pass from there. Um, as an organizer, I've learned you can organize money and people, and I've never had much money, so I've become pretty good at organizing people. So. Thank you. I'm Ralph Park, the National Office of the Sky of Detroit, a former high school teacher, and I run the Half Astro Physicist Blog Carl. <laughs> um, I got involved with Tangle Optics in 2000. I was one of the uh, guinea pigs for the development of their online courses, and I uh, used to fly teaching until uh, I stopped teaching in 2005, but in a way I was benefited. And that went back to, I think, the 2009 conference since then, too, so I still try to uh, keep in touch as much as I can and do what I can. Great. Uh, Rich Wellman, uh, living in Northern California, in San Francisco. I have my own observatory called Over the Hill Observatory. <laughs> Not unrelated to the fact that I celebrated my 70th birthday a few days ago. Uh, 30, 34 years of teaching, 32 in the public high school uh, in San Francisco, and two years in East Court, Chile, uh, many, many years ago. Um, I do speak Spanish pretty well, and uh, I've been at the University since uh, 1994, I think, the beginning of initial TRA workshop with Tim, and we climbed half dome when you saw me together that day. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. Yeah. And so then I have a teacher who's been for many years. And uh, I have a picture because of the same question once when I was young, a question I did on there was, and I thought when looking at the flame the sky of the one we had to go great, and I wondered how men could become more enough to make the search more a place. And this was a question I did on their work to the people around me on the very day when I saw somebody that was able to take me from the top of the hill with a red sack and with food and all day long from here to here and looking here, there, behind, before, experiment. That was the very end of them. I was very young and I understood that with experiment. I understood that people could be all in our school in time science. It was not only for Jupiter. This is why I have a teacher. Great. Thank you. Michel. Uh, Michel from Paris, France. I'm a president of Cigana. So I'm going to speak a long time, a short time. Uh, I work in astrology, uh, astrophysics, mechanics, culture, uh, in the first and physics. And when you make astronomy, you can work and you can breathe together. Sure, it's not. It's Yes, very good. Matt. Uh, Matthew, well, I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm a biochemist. Uh, I just recently found out about HRU. Uh, doing some better uh, resources for some faculty in the country for science and faculty education. And we have someone online? Yes? They're muted. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I muted them because there was a noise coming from them. Okay. Do you want to say hello to them? Uh, let me unmute them to see if there's anybody there. Hi, Alan. Who's, who's there? John, Kalina. Oh, John. Oh, welcome. Fantastic. John. I had no idea I could be heard. Oh, <laughs> John, will you please introduce yourself to the group? This is Kate Meredith speaking. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> introduce yourself, please. Sorry, um, I started with HOU the year after Tim et al., so I guess that would be 1994 in Boston. And I've been... I mean, I've been always doing HOU stuff, but not quite attending meetings every year, but doing workshops here and there and around North Carolina. So nice to connect with you all again. Very good. Kate, you? No, 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 you have to give your 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm Kate Merritt, and um, I live uh, just northwest of here on the Mississippi River. Um, my husband is a state assembly person, and I have been uh, a teacher, and uh, I've done education public outreach projects while I get to stay home raising my two boys, Orion, just to show my dedication to astronomy, and Rowan, just to show my dedication to my Irish heritage. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm here, happy to be here, and 
Moving on. Okay. Now, so, as you heard what happened around the room here, or the people here, you'll notice that there are scientists here, there are amateur astronomers here, there are educators here, okay, who work with a lot of K-12 students, there are uh, every, really when you start to think there are education public outreach people here, uh, there, everyone is in this group whom we would consider to be uh, people who would engage in astronomy types of activities. Okay, so we have everyone. And then we have representation from around the world. So not only do we have the cross content of astronomy represented in this room and represented by hands on universe, but we also have the cross-cultural aspect represented in this room and represented in HOU, which is incredibly valuable. So in order to move forward, I need to get you to subscribe or I need to get you to believe in something. A whole lot. And what a whole on is, is it's something that is both a whole and a part simultaneously. You are a whole on. Okay? And we can go back and can say, well, here's a cell. It's made up of parts. And it is both a whole and a part of something else. And if we go ahead and we disrupt or we do something in here, or we take away a part, it would impact the whole. Can, is, is that safe to say? Yes, no? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So when we look at this and we say, okay, so here's a part, and then this is a holon made up of parts, but yet part of a whole. And these few folks here represent uh, you know, sort of the U.S. Uh, portion of, of hands-on universe. And we could go ahead and say, okay, when it gets to global HOU, these folks are a part of something much greater. And the second part of this, the whole on philosophy that you have to agree with, is the equation up there that maybe doesn't quite make mathematical or logical sense, but it does make human sense or it does make system sense, in that the parts collectively are greater than the sum of the parts individually. So that when we put all of these parts together, they do something that these parts can't do individually. So what I want you to think about for this part of the program here is that why don't you start thinking of yourself as a whole on? That you are made up of parts and you are parts of something greater. And that when you engage and you become a part that works with other parts collaboratively, collectively, that that entity that you create can do, some, can do something that is far greater than who you are or that you could do alone. And that's, that's, the, the, that's the way we need to think about this. So, what we're going to propose here is this. Okay? This is what we're working toward. Okay? Here we are. Global Community for Astronomy is a whole one. Okay? It is part of something, and it's made up of parts. And these parts, just like the cell that we just took a look at, are made up of this is a whole one. People are a whole one. And we can have K-12 students, graduate students, teachers, scientists. We can go to you know, software, HOU, Salsa J, Max and DL, social networking, telescopes. Uh, we can come up and, and there are lots of different things that we can fill in here. Lots of different pieces. And that's where your wealth of expertise comes in today is to initially start this to start this process of identifying all of the parts. Now the problem to date, all right, has been communication. Now I think that that's something we can all agree that there's just not enough time in the day to read all of your email. There's just not enough time in the day to communicate in the way that you want to communicate. So 
everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Now I want you to envision that you're at your computer or your iPad or whatever, even though we took them away from you. Okay. And you go to what we call the cloud or the nebula that's called the GCA, the Global Community for Astronomy. And you go into the system and it logs, you log in and it says, good morning, Alan. Okay. Just want you to know that you like to take images and we have a couple of astronomers, you like to work in binary star systems or variable stars, and we have a couple of astronomers who, need a, who, who wish to have images, and since you have a telescope and you like to do that sort of thing, um, what do you think about filling these requests this evening? Okay. Because Alan loves to observe, that's what he does. But Susan here is a second grade teacher. Okay. And Susan goes to the cloud and she logs in and says, good afternoon Susan, just wanted to let you know that somebody posted an activity that has some very high ratings, it's a piece of curriculum that has been very effective for second grade teachers or that for second grade students in learning this particular concept, whatever it might be. You might want to go check this out. And Somebody else is saying, okay, uh, there's a group that's trying to form to look at uh, Supernova 2017-I. And since we know you have an interest in Supernova, we've identified that in the system, perhaps you'd be interested in joining this team. And oh, by the way, there are some messages there waiting from Kenya in Africa, from Rome in Italy, uh, from partners around the world that want to participate, may want to go ahead and collaborate with you on this. And you happen to go into the system and it says, there's a page there that says powered by Google Translate. And although the person from Kenya might have written their note or their email in a different language, it comes up to you automatically in English. And when you respond in English, it goes automatically back to them in their native language and opens up a world of communication. Okay, you can open your eyes. So, that's what we're proposing is the development of a smart system or a smart cloud that basically takes users, monitors their activities, what they engage in, what they get involved in, and that tailors the work or their part or their activities in the cloud to something that they have an interest in. But not only that, it evolves. So that when Vivian here decides that she wants to, she maybe goes ahead and she thinks, well, you know, I have an interest in A, B, C, and D over here. That's what I started with, but down the road I change and I have an interest in F and G. The system knows that and can go ahead and focus her involvement to what she has an interest in at that point in time in her life. And that she can come in to the cloud or the nebula as she sees fit or as is convenient for her. Okay. So this is what's called a smart system. Now, um, I'm an Einstein fellow with the National Science Foundation and I can tell you from some of the meetings that we've been in is that the Cyber Infrastructure Directorate uh, at NSF is really interested in these kinds of systems that can go ahead and monitor um, people's activities and create more focused experiences. Because we go back to this problem where you have so many things going on in your life, you can't sit, you know, it's why people don't join listservs anymore. It's like, I don't want all that crap. I don't want all of that garden. Well, what if it could be sifted through for you? And that this could be something that's more like a living organism that evolves over a period of time. And that's the sort of system that we're talking about putting in place. You know who else has a big interest in this and who has a lot of money to give? Who? Department of Defense. They are the big pushers behind it, actually. 
So, if you can envision an astronomy community that is global in nature, where it's not simply something that's confined to the United States, but it's completely open-ended, it's really leaderless, because if Rosa wants to put up a piece of software or put up an activity, she, as part of the cloud or part of the nebula or part of the whole on, can put that in there. She can inject something into the system. And then it's up to the other users if, you know, they like it, they don't like it, or they can go ahead and modify it or whatever it else is that they want to do. Carl wants to put something up there, it goes up. Okay, so it's a, and if something happens, I like to do something, I put it up, great. If I fall off of the face of the earth and people really like my work and stuff like that and they say, oh, too bad, Tim is gone, it doesn't matter. I'm not important to the system. The system lives on because the system evolves in its life over a period of time. So what we're looking at, and I know this is far-fetched, I know that, you know, uh, it, it is, it's something that might be a little bit out there, but it's something that's doable, and we are in a prime position, I think, to do it. And when we looked around at where are the platforms to launch this kind of thing, at least myself, I thought of Global HOU because all of the components are already here. We could come together, develop the system, test the system out, and get it working and fine-tune it, and then release it to the entire world. So that's what we're talking about, and I'm going to turn it over to Kate. So we have a far-fetched idea that we can do, and one thing that we don't tend to do as educators is think about actual management systems. We tend to go straight for top-down, I've got a great idea, I'm the champion, or I have a big grant, I, I, this is such a great idea, I ended up with this big grant, and here it is, and this becomes the center of the project. Now this whole idea of a whole on and the nebula and this weird idea, I think calls to us to open up our imagination and consider different form of management. And a friend of mine put me on to a really great book. I don't know why I read a book on management last year. I must have been a little bored. Um, but it was comparing two very different management styles. And the analogy was a management style that was a spider and a management style that, or organizational structure that's a starfish. Okay, so a comparison, an analogy. So if you've got an organization or a project or an idea that's like a spider, so let's look at what a spider is. We've got, you know, the abdomen, we've got a head, and then somewhere around eight eyes, so we've got eight legs. And, and, you know, you can lose a leg and you're okay. You lose an eye, not so bad. You can probably handle it. You've got seven more. You lose your head, it's all over for you. You might be able to twitch around for a little bit, but it's not good. It's not looking good for you. Okay. So all of your direction and all of your 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 idea that the spider is like an idea that started with an amazing one, amazingly big grant, or had one person driving it, or a great organization that had a CEO with lots of charisma and power and drove an idea forward. It's a spider. Then we got some humble little starfish. And I know, technically, I think I'm going to write to the guy to see star. Nothing fish about this, but we'll get my biology hackles up here. The, um, the starfish. So the starfish is a totally different organizational model. If the starfish kind of a leg taps on an abalone over here and it's going to have a good lunch, it's kind of got to send a message around and get agreement, it has to start moving in that direction, gets agreement from the rest of the legs to get involved with opening up that abalone. Also, if you happen to get injured, if you're a starfish, and you lose a leg, no big deal. It mobilizes all those stem cells, everything it needs is right there, it mobilizes them, and and meanwhile, life goes on. Get a little extra injury someplace. Sometimes things can mutate. I've seen pictures, 
just Google image these guys, and you find starfish with extra legs and all sorts of funky stuff, but they're still surviving. They're doing fine. Has an ability to adapt and mutate when disturbed, reacting to its environment. Lots of great stories about starfish, and, and you, cut, you can even cut it half and chop it in pieces. As long as there's enough stem cells left to get it going, it's good. So when you start thinking about the whole lot, I think the starfish model is really applicable here. So what I want, there's a lot, tons of examples I could give you. I could talk about this whole model for hours. This is very fascinating. But what I want you to do today is just consider some of the characteristics of being a starfish and thinking that if we are going to develop this cloud idea, that this, a starfish model is worth considering. It has resiliency. It doesn't rely on any sense of management. It's not coercive, and I don't mean coercive in a bad way, but it doesn't come top down. It's, it's collaborative. It has, there has to be agreement. And if one piece falls off, it can start a whole new starfish over here. It, can, it has the ability to continue to generate new ideas. Um, so I want you to consider that as we go along here. It's, uh, that, this, for example, how many, we have lots of different countries represented here. How many people in their country have Alcoholics Anonymous or AA? I don't know what else we would call it in your country. Okay, look at the hands. Alcoholics Anonymous is everywhere. It was started by some guy named Bill a long time ago. And he took the idea, the beginning of the idea, from a Lutheran minister, in fact, who had a six-step program. And it doesn't matter what country you go to, every Alcoholics Anonymous meeting agrees on those 12 steps. They have the core values. But if a, if a group wants to form over here or form over there, it does. If it disappears, it disappears. Nothing, nothing, the, the organization itself, the core, the heart of what Alcoholics Anonymous is and its mission continues. It is the classic starfish organization. You ask somebody, how many people, how many members does AA have? No idea. Well, how do you collect fees? Uh, no idea. How do you brand this organization? No idea. If Wikipedia, is another one. Study Wikipedia. The head of the, the, the founder of Wikipedia has no idea when asked in the interview recently, how are your servers maintained? Where are your servers? How are they maintained? Who makes decisions on it? I don't know, the members just come. His answer literally was, the members come to an agreement and it happens. They agree to basic norms, basic values, and the rest happens spontaneously. So here we have an interview just like uh, Tim was saying, we have a platform. We have a lot of shared values and history, and we have a platform to launch from. And if we think as we're launching into this, that we are all equally contributing our ability to come up with an idea and grow an idea and have it pull what we need from the resources, come into existence and out of existence, as time goes on, if we maintain that spirit, we will be truly internationally collaborative. We will be resilient and creative. And so those are the ideas of the starfish that I'd like you to carry into your conversations as we move along this afternoon. And the rest we can talk about, about over dinner. All right, so there are a series of three questions that your group are going to, you're going to be asked. We're going to do them one at a time. It's going to be a period of discussion within your group, coming up with responses, a series of responses to the question. And then we're going to share those responses with, our, with the entire team and try to capture what can fall out of or what we can squeeze out of the green matter in your head. Okay? So the first question that's there that we want the, the individual team, the groups, to discuss is what has HOU taught us that could help support the emergence of a spontaneous, glo spontaneous global community for astronomy, research, and learning? Very important rule here. No vision and wine. Sorry. No complaints. 
You can bring a negative in by using, by starting it off with, we learn blank from. Okay, that's the only way you can bring the negative in. So, go to it. And we're going to try to give you about five, six minutes to discuss, get your ideas down together, and then we're going to go ahead and open it up and discuss it as a, as a with the team. So when you hear this little bell, you will know you're down to about a minute or two to wrap up your group's idea. We may begin. You have five minutes. Five minutes. Um, I think we learned that that teachers and hey, John, John, you're in group four. You know, okay. you are helpful to each other. That the court you have is knowledgeable. Yeah, I'm going to have to pop out of the power as well as educators who understand pedagogy. Okay. So, but we won't do that. You can go sit down. Be part of your group if you want to. Okay, I'm going to take a minute. Here in a Okay. All right. So, I don't really have the what is it? I don't know what one thing I learned from a grant project is which is a better way to hold teacher workshops by face-to-face or by more and more remote uh, which is more effective. The result of that contract is well um, effective in the criteria. And there was students who had to give us what, what was found or the result of that one particular study was on the face to face or online. Yeah, that the students the outcome was the So that's not what we expect. So as you saw the stats, we have remote face to face. And that's for teachers, well, actually, for the teacher's work, the outcome is the teacher's work, the teacher's then what they take to their students, it ends up being the teacher's One study. Do we do it online? Do we do it online or remote? Uh,